What a crazy busy week. I was I felt like I was all over the city and I was in Cambridge and and I was doing a bunch of different things. Uh, the first thing that that I really want to point out and talk about are two Cambridge kids who uh, football players who have committed to McMaster University in Hamilton uh, and two really, really good kids as well. Uh, Dylan Hillier played quarterback last season for the Preston Panthers. Uh, he was one of their elite players, one of their star players. Uh, he decided that he's going to go join the McMaster Marauders in Hamilton, uh, head coach Greg Knox. So congratulations, Dylan. Uh, he's, he's a super kid and uh, and he's going to have success in the OUA in, in the coming years. Uh, the second kid from Cambridge is Josh Cumber. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about Josh. He played for the St. Benedict Saints football team, which I know is close to your heart, James. That's right. St. Benedict. Uh, he played for the St. Benedict Saints football team, and he's also decided that he is going to join the Marauders. So mm -hmm. a couple of Cambridge kids going there. And, uh, and he's your best friend on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've been going back and forth a little bit this week. Yeah, no, J Josh is a great kid, and he's been super supportive of 509 Sports Online. And uh, you know what? I'm really, I'm really genuinely happy for him. I had the opportunity to catch up with him. I was at uh, a football... Uh, um, camp last weekend uh, called uh, MVP Academy. It was at the Griffin Fieldhouse at the University of Guelph, and I wasn't really sure who was going to be there, but there was there was Josh Cumber, and I had a I had a really good conversation with him and was able to do an interview about going to McMaster. And he just uh, posted on Instagram and Twitter the other day uh, that he had you know officially signed, and he had the you, you, you see the pictures all the time with the kids, right? And they're yeah. signing, and uh, you know it's it's a big moment for them. You know what? It's one of the biggest decisions that they'll make in their life up to this point. Obviously, where they want to continue you to you know play football or play whatever sport that it is and it's a hard decision right these these kids and, and you know this James these mm -hmm. kids are recruited heavily by by different coaches there you know there's there's five you know the high end kids have have universities from even western canada right. that you know tr and try to get them some of them down so because the rest of their lives are basically directed from it's it's a fork in a road right and you just basically where you go to university changes who you are as a person absolutely absolutely yeah. and it's you know what and, and for these kids you know that they don't have a lot of a lot of knowledge and you know about the different schools and and, and things like that and you know the coaches are all trying to you know doing their best and, and so they should that's part of the recruiting process right and that's part of what coaches are supposed to do is to sell their program and sell their school um, you know and I think I think what I've noticed too is that the coaches do an exceptional job specifically the football coaches, of talking about being student athletes. And they always put the word student first. And that's one of the most important elements in all of this because most of them will not play past a university level and, you know, they need to have an education. And these schools are obviously giving out great educations, but, um, you know, I think that, you know, when, when a decision's made, you know, you think you should focus on academics first and then athletics second, right? It's really easy to pick the best football team and go join the best football team or the best basketball team or whatever it is. But, you know, when, when a decision's being made, I think it's really critical that you do a lot of research on the different programs and make sure that, you know, where you're going is the perfect fit. Right? right, both yeah. a athletically and academically, right? Yeah. And you know, there's huge amounts of change in that direction as well lately. People are really understanding the value of the education, and you know, sports is is great for now, but if you have no backup plan, then you're you're kind of messed yeah. up. And and parents are yeah. looking for that in universities, so yeah. that's become sort of like your best athletic school can't can't survive anymore unless they also focus on the academics. They're they're learning that, and you know the the kind of the pioneers in that are, are sort of the best athletic schools right now. For sure. Because they figured that out the first and now everyone wants to go to them. Yeah, and I would say that to any, you know, teenager or, you know, kid that's trying to make a decision, right? Imagine the pressure of having three football coaches or three basketball coaches sitting in your living room as a 17 or 18 year old kid mm -hmm. saying, you know, we want you because of this. We want you because of that. We think this is great. You should come to our school, right? That's a lot of pressure, yeah. right? And all of these schools are trying to make their teams better. And so they should, right? But at the end, you know, it's it's tough. You know, it's, it's you know, the parents really have to, you know, manage it and, and make sure that, you know, that the kid's making the right decision because it's really easy for 17-year-old to say, no, I, I want to go here because it's it's the shiniest penny. 
right. kind yeah. of thing, right? So. Yeah, for sure. Um, now, Mac, when I was growing up, always had you know a big name in football. Are they still still doing as well as they used to? Yeah, McMaster's always been as you know since I returned to the area. 15 years ago, Mac's always been, you know, a perennial powerhouse. You know, they had great quarterbacks with Kyle Quinlan and Marshall Ferguson. Uh, you know, they won they won that Vanier that right. that year. They beat uh, they beat Laval in one of the <laughs> the craziest. Laval's Van- another big game. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. They're, they're I was gonna well. say Laval does okay in in university football. But yeah, like Western's obviously been a powerhouse for a lot of years. McMaster, you know, with Stefan Patasek, who's a former uh, coach at Laurier as well. He was uh, he was the offensive coordinator in 2005 when the Golden Hawks won that Vanier Cup at Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton. You know, under Gary Jeffries and, and Ron Van Moorkirk. So McMaster's always been a powerhouse. Uh, Western, you know, and, and you know, and, there, and there's ebbs and flows with other teams too. You know, you, you see Laurier had a down year. You know, the first year that Michael Falls came in, but you know, look at them three years later. There they are winning. The Yates Cup mm-hmm. in the craziest game, aside from the McMaster Laval game, <laughs> the, the Laurier Western football game when Michael Neville right leads them down in that crazy comeback in the second half at Western two years ago, and then Nathan Mesher plugged to Sir John A. McDonald, Nathan Mesher, SJM grad, kicks that field goal from I think it was 37 yards with no time left, and you know so Laurier went from a one and seven team a couple of years ago to. Winning a Yates Cup, right? Right. S Jam—that's another school that just produces athletes. They absolutely I can't do. How they do it? Yeah, and you know what they've—and and it's right across all the boards. Like it's right across everything too. You know, yeah, what, every what, sport, they're, what, always, they're always up there. Right. Like whether you're talking about you know boys basketball and what Steve Maloney has done with with a bunch of different kids. You know, including uh, Nadim Hodzik, who is at the University of Waterloo. Uh, what an incredible, incredible uh, athlete Nadim is. He's only in his second year at the University of Waterloo, and he's a he's a surgeon. John A. McDonald grad, uh, you know, to Josh Alexander, who is the head football coach. And and Josh Alexander, you know, does things the right way. And he's been a tremendous, tremendous influence on a lot of of kids that have come through the SJM football program. You know, jo- Josh wants to win. Josh is a football coach, yeah, right? <laughs> right? And, and Josh likes winning. But have you, have you seen any uh, evidence that he's also sort of academic based? Oh, they all, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And he's a teacher at the school, right? Of course. Um, yeah. But, like, this SJM team has made the semifinals in Wix of football seven years in a row, right? Right? What does that say? What does that say? And, and there's more ter- terrific athletes coming out. Jake Sertikowski, he was a linebacker, sort of the defensive MVP, sort of the defensive anchor for that Highlanders team this past year. It was his fifth year. Uh, he went to the University of Waterloo. He's committed to Chris Bertoia and the Waterloo Warriors. Cam Steinbach, uh, who's deciding sort of right now, uh, you know, what his plan is for next season, and he's unsure, and you know that's what happens sometimes. But uh, Cam is a tremendous, tremendous receiver uh, for that football team. Conrad Hendon, a little running back, uh, boy, he's got a motor that he goes, uh, and you know he really put the team on his back a couple of years ago and led them to the semifinals in, in Wixa again. So I guess what I'm saying is there's SJM is, has done wonderful, wonderful things. And they're not only turning out, you know, good athletes, um, they're turning out quality people. Jake Sertikowski and his family are some of the, the best people that I've met just, you know, doing what I do, going around and talking to people and doing different interviews. Uh, the Sertikowskis are just terrific. Yeah, I'll tell you, I've never been more impressed with the type of people that this area is. Is now putting out when you come when you're talking about elite athletes um the kindness of these people and you know like just they, they, they're going in the right direction in terms of personalities and and who they're going to be as people in the future and i can't tell you how positive the feedback has been for 519 sports online mm-hmm. from some of the people that you know we're just talking about right now um because it's it's giving them a platform it's yeah. giving them a it's giving these kids a voice yep. it, it's you, giving you them know, a just, place just the just technology has given them a way to kind of you know to volunteer their time to give to charities to raise yeah. money for charities to advertise things to help out the community right and people really kids really step up to the plate and take advantage of it. Here's a good story. This is where I was on, I believe it was Monday night. I was at the Waterloo Regional Boxing Academy and they did a fundraiser over the holidays for the Children's Wish Foundation. And we know what the Children's Wish Foundation does. They're looking to grant wishes to kids with, um, you know, potentially life-threatening illnesses. And these kids, 
some of them were younger, some of them were older, but let's say they range in age from, I don't know, seven and to 20 years old. And they did a check presentation to Ann Beam, who is the local president for the Children's Wish Foundation. And, and I'll tell you what they called the, the thing in a minute, but uh, there is $2,100. There's kids at the Waterloo Regional Boxing Academy who raised $2,100 for Children's Wish. And I think that's just phenomenal. I, I really do. These kids at such a young level are starting to understand and appreciate what it means to give back and to give back to your community. And I think that's an amazing, amazing positive message that everybody should hear. So I just want to say congratulations to those kids at the Water the Regional Boxing Academy because you deserve a shout out for raising $2,100 for, you know, for kids that, you know, are in a lot worse circumstances than you. And that is such a great um, education for those kids. Absolutely. Now they know how to go about that sort of thing and how to become involved in their community. And they know the feeling that it's like, that it gives you to be involved in your community. Here's what they named the fundraiser. This this is the funny part to me. Like, I don't know why it makes me laugh, but right. it just makes me chuckle. It's the Water the Regional Boxing Academy, and they called their fundraiser Seasons Beatings. <laughs> oh, <nice>. <laughs> <laughs> right? But but no, it's it's, it's so good. That's it, but a bit it's scary for the people receiving the money. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to pay you $2,100. Congratulations, but... Seasons Beatings. <laughs> There's a small caveat here. <laughs> Go but it's a good gimmick, right? And it's a, it's a good, it, it catches your attention. Right? When, when, when you see stuff like for that. Sure, you, sure. you know, with the Kitchener Sports Association, that was something else that happened this week on Tuesday night. Uh, they were, you know, handing out uh, grants to different organizations. KW Sidewinders Sledge Hockey, Kitchener Minor Soccer, Woolwich Minor Hockey Association. Um, you know, and, and helping those organizations, you know, with a little bit of funding to help sports at the grassroots level. Right. Right. That's that's great. You know what? And that's that's what community is about. That's what making a difference is about.